Chess is one of the best games and you should learn it. You should learn it, learn it intimately. I learned it at a very young age. In fact, I was pretty good at it when I was like uh, eight or nine. I had left it behind for other stuff, but the thing that it taught me was to put myself in the shoes of my opponent, to imagine the world from his point of view. So you're you and you have this friend. Uh, let's call her Nancy. Nancy is this friend uh, your age, you know, a friend from college or something like that, right? And she is, well, let's be frank, she's fat. <laughs> she's a porker. Uh -huh. And, you know, the face department, she's kind of ugly. Kind of ugly, yeah? But Nancy, I mean, you've been like bros, pals since forever, since, you know, first week of uh, freshman year or whatever the fuck, right? And you're like peas and carrots and you talk about all kinds of stuff, right? And you're best buds and you've always thought of her as your best bud. Huh? And, and, you know, she's like this best bud who does all kinds of stuff for you, you know? Uh, uh, she listens to you when you've got problems with your boss. And, um, you know, when, when you know, you, you have to wash clothes and stuff, she helps you do it. Sometimes she does it herself, you know, and sometimes she'll go to your apartment because she has a key to your apartment and she'll just go to your apartment and sort of like spritz it all up, you know, and everything. And, and you know, she's just uh, somebody that you can talk to and, and you can talk to her at two in the morning about whatever's going on. Whenever you call her, she always takes your call, you know, and, and she's just like, uh, she's such a great friend. Yeah. And then, you know, one day, uh, um, you know, uh, Nancy here, uh, she calls you up and she says that she's going to go and uh, pick you up because she's got this uh, friend, uh, this friend called Kim. OK. And, uh, you know, she, you know, Nancy comes in a car with Kim and Kim is hot. I mean, really fucking hot. I mean, just like, whoa, Nelly, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the three of you go out and you and Kim are kind of like flirting and stuff. And then, you know, a couple of days pass and Nancy calls you, but you're kind of busy because you've got work and you've got stuff to do. And you've also got Kim, you know, you've been like sort of like uh, calling her up and texting her and you go on a couple of dates and you bang her. And, you know, things are going well. Things are going real well with Kimmy. Right. And um, Nancy gets wind of this. And all of a sudden she's pissed off. She goes to your house and she yells at you and she says that you're such a bad person and that she never wants to have anything to do with you ever again. And you're like, what the fuck, man? I mean, uh, we're friends, we're bros, we're pals, you know? And I met this Kim girl and she's hot and so what the fuck is the problem? I mean, Nancy, you and I, we're, we're just friends, aren't we? Uh, so you see the situation, right? There's this channel I follow, a uh, very small one, but I think it'll grow, and I'm looking forward to seeing it, to watching it grow, called um, Wheat Waffles. Wheat Waffles, plural or singular, I forgot, it doesn't matter. And uh, I'll leave a description in the link below. Now, Wheat Waffle put out a video <laughs> a while ago, and uh, in it, he talks about the most uncomfortable situation, the, the most depressing situation that had ever happened to him, something that had totally blackpilled him, right? Because uh, Wheat Waffle, he's this young guy. I don't know how old is, he is, but from his voice, I mean, if you told me that he's like 19 or 23 or somewhere in that age range, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. And, and his mentality is very much of that age. You know, it's dark nihilistic, I mean, totally fucking blackpilled. The, the kid is just blackpilled as fuck, yeah? And um, he told a story that was basically the story I just told you. <laughs> you know, he'd been, uh, you know, being friends with some girl, mm -hmm. and, uh, and she made it really fucking clear that they were just friends, yeah? And, uh, you know, Wheat Waffles all of a sudden introduced her to some friend of his who was a good looking guy, and all of a sudden, you know, th this girl just blew him off and, and ran after this uh, friend. I think the friend in the story was called Jeremy, some shit like that. It doesn't matter, you know. The, 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 the outlines of the story are what matter, of course. And, and he was so pissed. Wheat Waffle. And, and I'm not shitting on the kid, okay? I want to make it really fucking clear. I'm not shitting on the kid or putting him down. In fact, his videos have given me a lot to think about. And the fact is that this first video that you're watching is going to be uh, the first of three that I'm going to be doing regarding wheat waffles. Because his situation, his point of view, I mean, how can I put it? 
I don't want you to shit on him, uh, quite the contrary, because if I met him, I'd want to hug him. I want to hug him and tell him, kid, dude, you're not seeing the bigger picture. Yeah, because uh, Wheat Waffle is a very, very a sharp kid. He's a smart, smart kid, but he's totally nihilistic and totally blackpilled because he has a limited perspective of as to what's going on. And also, smart as he is, he's not using his power of empathy, of projection, of figuring out what the other person is thinking. He's not using that, okay? And so he tells a story of how he was friends with some girl. Mm -hmm. And, and he was just friends, but you know, the whole implication of his being just friends is that he wants to get in her pants, right? And he figures that if he's friends with her, he'll get that much closer. And then he's pissed off, I mean really fucking pissed off, that she blows him off, you know, for some uh, good-looking friend of the kids, right? Uh, this uh, Jeremy fellow, I think, is, I think his name was, like I guess that doesn't matter. The point is that, see, he, uh, uh, Wheat Waffle, said in his video that he had devoted so much time to this girl and listening to her problems and being a good friend. And in the end, she just ran off with some other guy. And I'm like, dude, come on. I mean, come on. If you had like a 250-pound uh, uh, girl as a friend, not girlfriend, but rather a girl who happens to be a friend, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, she was your friend and she did all kinds of stuff for you and helped you out and this and that and listened to your problems and talked to you at all hours of the day or night, mm -hmm. But you just didn't want to bang her, right? And all of a sudden she came at you like, you know, why aren't you in love with me? You know, I'm doing all these things for you and you're not. And you'd be like, what the fuck, man? What, what is your problem? We're just friends. See, that's the exact same problem that happened with Wheat Waffles. Mm -hmm. He was just a friend to this girl. And she had made it clear from the get-go that she didn't see him romantically. Just as you, as a guy, would never see a butt-ugly 250-pound girl as a potential mate, as a potential sexual partner. No, you wouldn't, unless you're at the very bottom of the totem pole, right? But if you're, you know, medium and up, you're not going to look at some porker like that as a potential girlfriend. Of course not. You'd be out of your fucking mind because you can do better. Of course you can. And see, Wheat Waffle, he, smart as he is, was not putting himself in her shoes. He was not putting himself in the same situation and imagining the same situation huh? from her point of view. You play chess, you're white, hmm? and you move a few pieces here and there. You, you, you know, open with a pawn and maybe a, a knight and whatnot, but within the second or third move, I mean, right after you've done your opening, if it's a structured opening, you're instantly putting yourself in the shoes of your opponent, and you're imagining the board from the point of view of black. And you're white and you're playing, but at the same time, you're imagining yourself as black and seeing the board from black's point of view and seeing what opportunities are available to you as black so that you as white can counteract those or exploit some weakness he might have that you might not notice unless you put yourself in black's shoes. You see what I'm saying? Smart guys, especially young guys, young smart guys, often as not fail to put themselves in the shoes of the other person. And it happens in all kinds of contexts, by the way. I'm talking about girls, right? But it happens in business. It happened to me a lot. When I was young, for instance, I got involved in a few deals and I didn't realize what the other person wanted from the deal. I thought that they were just paying me because, you know, I was such a great guy. I didn't quite understand why they were paying me the amount of money that they were paying me because I was young, naive, and I failed to put myself in their shoes. As I got older, of course, I learned to be, you know, uh, um, a semi-expert in that. Because as you get older, you realize that that's the most important fucking thing. Yeah, you always, always, always want to put yourself in the shoes of the other guy. You always want to look at the board from the point of view of black. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, you know, what's the smart move? Why am I moving? Why am I doing this instead of that? You always want to put yourself in the other person's shoes. And the case of uh, Wheat Waffles here, this, this amusing story. Yeah? Smart as the kid is... He's not putting himself in the, in the shoes of the girl. And he can do so. He's smart enough to do so, certainly. I mean, I can tell that the kid's got brains, yeah? And, and this amusing nihilism, which he'll get over it because he's young. And right now, he views the whole of existence as this uh, black 
pool of misery and he's drowning in it and he's kind of enjoying it right because when you're young you kind of enjoy that kind of nihilism and 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 uh, and extreme pessimism if you want to call it that yeah because when you're young you're like that and how do i know because i was young too and i was like that every fucking smart kid when they're young is like that they go through a phase of being these uh, black pilled nihilists and just like being miserable about the, about the world instead of projecting their imagination into the shoes of the other people and trying to see the world from their point of view so that they can get an advantage and achieve the things that they want. We eat waffle here in this story about uh, being friends with this girl and getting absolutely nowhere. Yeah, he wasn't putting himself in her shoes. If he had done the simple experiment, the simple thought experiment rather, of uh, imagining that uh, you know he's a hot guy and he has a friend who's like this uh, ugly porker, then he'd understand the situation immediately and realize how foolish his expectations really were, because they were. Because he was setting himself up for failure. He was trying to be friends with the girl in order to get in her pants. And the funny thing is that you listen to the video, right? And he's kind of like, he keeps insisting that he's just friends with her, but at the same time, it's so obvious that he has this expectation that he's gonna bang her, you know? That eventually, with all the sacrifice and work, you know, she'll be like, oh yes, you're the one that I want. And she'll just unzip her fly, pull down her pants and open her legs and, you know, come and fuck me, big boy, who's been my great friend for all these months. <laughs> of course, that's not going to fucking happen. Of course not. Come on, man. Good, dude. Of course, she's not going to like, uh, you know, spread them for you just because you were a good friend. Just as you would never want to bang some ugly porker just because she's a good friend and listens to your bullshit and, you know, cleans up your apartment once in a while. Of course not. You'd be thankful, you'd be grateful, you think that she's a wonderful person, and what would you be wishing for her? You'd be wishing, and you'd tell her probably, you'd say, oh, you're such a great girl, you know, you'd probably make somebody a, a great wife and mother and a wonderful companion through life. You'd probably say that, just as this girl told Wheat Waffle and what a great guy he was and that she really hoped that he'd find some girlfriend, man. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 I want to insist, man, I'm not putting this kid down, okay? And probably Wheat Waffles is watching this shit, yeah? And he's probably thinking to himself, what the fuck is this old fart going to be doing for three fucking videos? Well, there's a lot to uh, take apart in your videos, okay? And it's really interesting, and that's why I'm going to be doing these videos. But, you know, the, the point, I, I want to make it clear to you. Okay, to you, Wheat Waffle, who's watching this, and you, just regular audience members, I am not shitting on the kid, okay? I, I have tremendous affection for young boys like that because I was that boy, okay? And I realized retrospectively that I had a very limited viewpoint as to what was going on. And so that's why I'm hoping that by, you know, talking about this thing and using the chess metaphor, you'll understand. You'll understand and expand your viewpoints because you've got the brain power. There's no question about that. You've got the brains, but you don't have the experience and, and you're, you have like these blinders on. You're holding on to certain assumptions about the world that are radically incorrect. And they seem to be correct, but they're not. In other circumstances, when you're like a good friend to somebody and you're always there and loyal and, and, and trustworthy and whatnot, especially with other guys, that counts for a lot. And it's because of our evolutionary makeup. If you're a good friend, to a guy, and you're always there, loyal, steady. He'll not only count on you, but he'll be there when you need him, okay? But you are applying that dynamic, which works exceptionally well with other men, because we evolved for this to evolve, to, for this to happen, right? You're applying that attitude, that behavior, which works with men, you're applying it to women where it doesn't work, because women have other desires because women are different from men. And you, you're a young guy, and you've been uh, brainwashed into thinking that guys and girls are the same. And so you're applying a, a, a mechanism of connection mm, that works with other guys to go out and hunt the woolly mammoth. You're applying it to a girl, it's failing, and you're pissed off, and you're getting all black-pilled, and you feel that your illusions are being destroyed. Well, in a sense, your illusions are being destroyed because your illusion, your false assumption, will never work with women. And that's why you failed. So understand the situation. And how do you understand the situation? By putting yourself in the other person's shoes. Imagining 
what it would be like if you were in their shoes, imagining that you are playing their position. How would you move? What pieces on the, on, the, on the table would you move around? The rook, the queen, one of the pawns, what? What would you be worried about? What would be your priorities? Always put yourself in the shoes of the other person. In our contemporary culture, there is a lot of emphasis on not doing this. All this crap about you know lived experience and whatnot, and that you can't talk about something unless you've actually lived it, that's so much bullshit, okay? Because it's, it's number one, it's not true. And number two, by following this guidance, you refrain from trying to empathize and put yourself in the shoes of somebody else. And by doing so, you fail to understand a more complete reality. Because remember, objective truth is objective. <laughs> truth is objective, but points of view on that truth are not merely relative, but they're rather limited. Mm -hmm. Because you as a human being are a limited individual and you only have a single point of view. But if you imagine yourself in the shoes of somebody else and assume their point of view and imagine the world from their point of view, you'll have a greater appreciation as to the truth and you'll understand reality better. And ultimately, that's what you want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below. I put out an extra video every Wednesday, and I also put out a Sunday show called The Weekly Webinar, where it's um, a two to three hour presentation, and I take questions and answers, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. So please check it out. Link is in the description below, as I said. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much, and I will catch you next time.